Originally, this started off as a rant, but then it took a better direction into a review, a very detailed one, one of which that is not all negative, but this is my honest opinion of Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. I just had to get this off my chest. I've recently completed it, but I cannot say that I beat it. This is what's really sad. I was having such a hard time truly enjoying the gameplay and the narrative of Metal Gear Solid V that the only way I could end up enjoying it was to have my best friend Dave share play and he beat the game and I watched. That's how much I couldn't enjoy the game. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I really thought the game was missing so many things about Metal Gear Solid that I love. Not in any way is it a bad game. Hell no. It's an excellent game. It just didn't have the things in Metal Gear Solid that I adore. It just didn't feel like a Metal Gear Solid game overall. Just hear me out. You don't have to agree with me though. First of all, the graphics are probably the best I've ever seen. The gameplay is definitely fun. It has a really good RPG element to it. I really did like how you level up Mother Base, weapons, all that stuff but the missions felt repetitive after a while. It was usually secure this, pick up that, extract this, get this document, da da da, which is exactly what Peace Walker was like. But I think the reason I liked Peace Walker was because of the co-op element. I really enjoyed Peace Walker because you were able to take a buddy with you or up to th four people could play together and you can do these missions as a team. And that's what made it fun, in my opinion. There was no co-op in this game. There's only player versus player on Metal Gear Online, and I've never been into Metal Gear Online. I couldn't, I just can't, I've never been a fan. That's just me. I prefer co-op as opposed to fighting each other, but in fighting each other in Metal Gear Online, you do team up with your friends to fight another team, and that's fun if you enjoy it. I've watched him play and it does look fun, but it's just not the kind of fun that I like. I'm, I'm a little weird. Before you even begin, to, you know, start yelling at me for, you know, not liking certain things. You have to understand that I'm a bit of an oddball and there's things in Metal Gear that I love that a lot of other people do not like. So this is just my opinion and I'm probably in the minority about some of these things. So like I said, the gameplay is very good, a little repetitive. I personally don't really give a shit about the many, 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 many different weapons you can have in this game because in the end, all you can really do is have a loadout of like, what, four to five different weapons. The buddy system was badass. I loved how you can take the dog with you, quiet, the robot, a, a Jeep, like this was very cool. I just wish you could have taken a buddy with you, like a real online buddy. That would have been perfect, but like we said, we, we're gamers and we're spoiled and we nitpick and maybe this is me nitpicking, but these are just little things that I thought would have made the game a little more fun, but that's not even that big a deal about that part anyway. The sandbox thing, like where you can go anywhere and do various missions on one trip, that was cool. It just... It did feel like it was a little constrained because you can only go to Afghanistan and Africa. In the previous Metal Gear Solid game, you were all over the world. That was the first time they did that. But you just didn't have, that wasn't that much variety, but that's not really a problem either. I'm just pointing out that there was a little less places to go, so to speak. Mother Base, exploring the exterior was really cool. I loved how you could just walk around, but wouldn't it have been great if you could just go inside? Some of the places you could go inside Mother Base, but I wanted to see the mess hall. I wanted to see the soldiers eating and I don't know. I'm just, I'm weird. I thought that would have been cool because that's what they gave you the impression that you can explore Mother Base, but in reality, all you can really do is go on all these catwalks, do a couple mini games of shooting targets and picking up diamonds and, you know, beating up soldiers. That's about it. So that was a little just a little less than what I hoped for, but it doesn't, that doesn't matter either. I'm just pointing out, you know, a couple things that would have been cool, but anyway. What mattered to me was the lack of narrative, in a way. The beginning cutscene was one of the most badass things I've ever seen when you're in the hospital, and there's, it was so gruesome, it was so dramatic, it was just amazing. But after that, there was just not that many cutscenes. There was a there was quite a few later in the game and then and they were pretty short. They they were so good that it, I didn't really care in the end. I figured what they were trying to do was make the cutscenes have more meaning by having less of them. So by the time they do show up, you appreciate them more. I think that's what they were going for. Problem is, I'm a huge Metal Gear Solid fan and in the other games 
cutscenes were so plentiful that I'm spoiled. I want to see more. I want more cutscenes. I want more conversations. I want to be able to either call on the codec or the radio, which you can listen to the cassette tapes, but some of the cassette tapes were just kind of boring. I'm sorry. Some of them were really good, and a lot of them were just like, whatever, I'm gonna play the game. I'm sick of hearing you talk about parasites and shit. I just, I got bored, I'm sorry. Most of the cutscenes and most of the conversations on the radio were either by Miller or Ocelot. Ocelot's character was pretty cool. However, I just felt a little strange. He was a little nicer than I expected him to be. But I know in the end, he's supposed to be on Big Boss's side, so that does fit the storyline. But maybe I'm alone here when I say that I expected Ocelot to have a little more of a malicious personality because that's who he is. He's not really right in the head. He's a badass, but he's kind of fucked up. In this game, he's practically your fairy godmother. I don't know. He's just, he was way too nice and it just kind of bothered me. But anyway, he's cool. So I, I do like him, but he just could have been a little more like the Ocelot that I'm familiar with. Miller, on the other hand, ugh. Monsieur Miller. I don't like Miller at all. Miller was kind of cool in Peace Walker. He had more personality. Here, he's a disgruntled, broken soldier, which would make him more of a badass, but honestly, all he does is bitch and moan about certain things you have to do in the mission, and half the time he would he would contradict what he would say. There's a mission where you have to rescue these little boys in Africa, and he would say, you have to kill them, big boss. Bingo. They can't go home. They've only got two options. Heaven or hell. And the moment you set them free, he says, Boss, if even one of those kids die, the mission's a failure. I'm like, make up your fucking mind, Miller. What the hell are you talking about? And the worst is when he would say the most obvious shit while you're playing. You're going into a building and he says, Boss, you're in a building. There's an interior, da 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 da. And it's like, oh my god, really? Dave makes a funny joke that it's called Smother Base because Miller is always mothering you and telling you what to do. Do this, do that. Na, 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 na. Motherfucker, I'm Big Boss. I'm the one in charge, not you. Stop telling me what to do. But anyway, that's just a pet peeve. Miller is just annoying. I can't stand him at this point. Maybe that's what they were going for. In the end, he ends up being kind of a bad guy. Shut up! So, whatever. Zorro Kruger, I mean, um, Skullface was pretty cool. Kind of unnecessary, but still pretty cool villain. He didn't last long in my opinion. He's a little cliched like a James Bond villain. I'm going to tell you my entire plot, my conquest for world domination. Of course. While you sit and listen before I kill you. Normally I would poke fun at this extremely long extended pause. The song is awesome, but Dave pointed out another cool thing. This is actually an homage to Snake Eater. And of course, this scene always makes me laugh. Who is doing this? Such a lust for revenge! Who? That's an excellent owl impression. Who? I bet that sounded a lot <laughs> less silly in Japanese. Pretty badass to see Volgan again, although I wish he would speak. I just wanted to hear him say... Kuwabara, Kuwabara. Just one more time, but... He's another silent character. What a shock. No pun intended. But he is possessed and dead, so that's why he doesn't say anything. Why is it that every character I really like gets such a tiny little role? Like Code Talker, he was really cool, but every time he spoke, I giggled because he reminds me of Master Tang from Kung Pao Under the Fist. He has great powers and is well protected by the evil council. It was cool to see Huey again. I did like the fact that he ends up being someone you hate. <laughs> Quiet, I actually really liked. Okay, I'll admit it, her outfit is a little on the slutty side, and frankly, I think it's stupid looking. <laughs> I've seen worse. Metal Gear Solid is notorious for having female characters that are incredibly sexy. They were also highly capable soldiers. They were badass, they were brave, they were intelligent. They weren't just easy on the eyes. They were beautiful on the inside and on the outside. I always felt the female characters were held in such high regard. Bitch! 
Quiet was no exception. She was awesome. And there's a very logical reason why she can't wear clothes. Because she breathes through her skin, so it's perfectly justified. But I have to ask, why bother with the torn nylons? Why not just wear the bikini in a bulletproof vest or something? But you know, there were things she did that just made me giggle. I'm like, yeah, yeah, fan base, you know, like the boob physics and her bending over constantly and all that stuff. That did not bother me, though. She's really nice to look at, so I don't give a shit. <sighs> I kind of wished there was more of her though. In the end, when I started to really like her and you start to get a little bit of a character backstory, she goes bye-bye. And that pissed me off. I'm like, damn it. But I think that was the point. They wanted you to miss her, so they took her away and you do miss her. So that worked, if that was their intention. But I admit, I'm also spoiled and I wanted more of her because she was like the most capable badass character to take with you on missions. All these abilities that she has, makes Big Boss seem way less capable than her, like she could have easily beaten this whole game by herself. I contemplated this for days, the whole magical parasites thing versus the digitized nanomachines later in the series. So the parasites are apparently way more powerful, turning people into like X-Men, the way Quiet can teleport, turn invisible, and move super fast. Everything that she does is like godlike powers. It looked like the parasites overpowered nanomachines a million times over and made them obsolete, so why even bother with the nanomachines in the first place? Honestly, it just felt like the parasites were kind of thrown into the mix out of nowhere, so I didn't really like the concept. But that's exactly how I felt about the Patriots, and they became a necessity, so maybe over time I'll warm up to them better. Do you realize how excited I was when we encountered Eli, young Liquid Snake? It's not like any of us didn't already know that. Look at him. <laughs> but come on. He had the smallest role in this game. Like, why the hell was he even in this game? He says, like, maybe four sentences, a few evil stares, and then he steals the philanthropist, and then we never see him again. Goodbye, father. That's it. Fuck you, I'm out. <sighs> Don't even get me started with probably my favorite character in Metal Gear Solid, Psycho Mantis, as a little boy who has little to no significance in this game at all. He feeds off people's energy and uses the magical parasites to give them his ability to make sure rage that their rage can empower them and his power gets used by their rage or some evil dark force Jedi kind of stuff. I don't even know what the fuck's going on anymore. Basically, he floats around and does shit and disappears. Several times. And that's it. What I find funny is that any time that I would bring these things up or complain about them to Dave, he would defend this game so loyally as if I was criticizing a person or Hideo Kojima himself, and he'd correct me, no, 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 you have to understand that people were complaining about how many cutscenes are in the game and that they were bored and they want more gameplay, not cutscenes, and they're trying to give people what they want. However, they didn't really finish the game, which is why so much of it seems to be missing. And that's not Hideo Kojima's fault, that's fucking Konami's fault! And I can agree, but they had a long friggin' time to make this game, and I think they half-assed it because they were trying something new and it just didn't really work. I respect the hell out of their attempt to try something new because you have to in the gaming industry. You have to experiment. There's just so many choices they made about this game that I simply fail to understand. Why would you hire Kiefer Sutherland, an A-list, multi-million dollar actor, to play our main protagonist, and then he turns out to be a silent protagonist 85% of the time? He hardly says a word. And, to make matters worse... Who's that? What? We're not playing Big Boss. We're playing a random paramedic guy from Ground Zeroes who tried to save Paz and sacrificed himself to save Big Boss and they used him as a decoy. Which explains his silence and his kind of pacifist attitude and personality. A lot of that worked, but it also was kind of a huge slap in the face. This sudden Shyamalan movie twist kind of thing going on. It was a bait and switch. Again. Dave says he admires that because that was an homage to Metal Gear Solid 2, where we think we're gonna play Solid Snake for the remainder of the game, but instead we play Raiden, which pissed everybody off. So why would you do that again? I tried so hard to accept it and think, oh, that's a cool twist, that's an interesting concept, but it didn't feel right. It felt so alien and weird and random. It just felt like it didn't belong in the story at all. So essentially, everything that Big Boss does up until, I think, Metal Gear 2, that's not Big Boss, that's Big Boss's Phantom, who is Ahab, whatever the hell his name is.
I had a hidden hope that maybe Solid Snake would make an appearance of some kind, and I wasn't expecting that, but no. Now we don't even get Big Boss, and we don't get other characters that were very significant in the previous titles. They got rid of Chico, they got rid of Amanda, Lucille, and Strangelove. Strangelove had like a little bit of a backstory of what became of her by a cassette tape and a conversation, and that's it. So they just kicked them all to the curb like they didn't even matter. What the fuck's going on? I admit that the side quest thing about Paz was very cool. It was optional though, so and it made more sense because you're not playing Big Boss, you're playing the paramedic who tried to save her life but failed and couldn't accept her death so he was holding on to a hallucination of her. That was very interesting. But friends of mine have actually gotten through the entire game without even witnessing any of that. So it's as if she also disappeared from the series entirely. Dave's words of wisdom, he pointed out to me that Big Boss is not a real person. Essentially, the character of Big Boss is a persona, a symbol of hope and heroism and fighting for justice. So essentially, all soldiers can have the potential of Big Boss. And I can respect that. But I just love Big Boss, the character himself, so much that I can't simply accept to not be him when all I wanted to do was continue his story from his eyes, not the eyes of some guy who thinks he's him, and the whole being hypnotized in a coma by Ocelot thing, I can believe that's possible because of who Ocelot's parents are and his capabilities, but it just feels like it was thrown out of nowhere. That was just a weird ass reason. And the more I talk about this, the more I realize how incredibly spoiled and picky I am. I apologize, but you gotta understand, I wanted things from this game so badly that just simply were not there. They just were not there. You know, Little things that just game. made it to where it just didn't feel like a Metal Gear Solid game to me. Remember when, when you fight the Foxhound unit, or Dead Cell, all those awesome characters from the villain groups from every other Metal Gear Solid game, each of them had a backstory, each of them had an amazing persona, they were either really cool or scary or batshit crazy, but then you got these Parasite unit or the Skull unit, you just fight them, and you never see them again, and that's it. They had no story. Good job, come back to Mother Base. That pissed me off, there was no character development. I think the best character development in the game was probably Huey, believe it or not, because Huey has a long history behind him. You know about who his son's gonna be, then you find out what happened to Strangelove. I haven't killed anyone. Please, let me out. Guilty! All counts. My fault. So, the game overall had some very good story elements, but the narrative was just so choppy and it felt rushed. The chapters, like the last couple chapters, seemed to be very rushed for some reason. They just didn't feel complete. The endings were great, but they just, the, the way they were done just didn't do it for me. I don't, I can't really put my finger on it. When you progress in the story missions, they would just be, like, you get a, a radio call from usually Miller, and then you'd land somewhere and do a couple of objectives. Maybe have one or two cutscenes during this mission, and they'd go back to Mother Base, and then do it again. And again. And it just didn't... It didn't feel like a Metal Gear Solid game to me. It felt kind of like Peace Walker, but they did focus more on gameplay and less on narrative, and that overall is why this game just didn't quite do it for me. I am so into stories. That's the shit that I love. I love a game that feels like a movie. I want both though. <laughs> and I felt like the other games had both. They had just as many cutscenes and optional conversations on the radio, interactive, in-depth storyline, a lot of nostalgia, a lot of backstories. This game just kind of got rid of all that. Got rid of half the shit that I love in Metal Gear Solid. It just didn't have it. So it's not a bad game, but it's not the best game ever played. And honestly, I regret pre-ordering it. I spent $100 on this collector's edition. And this game inspired me to never pre-order a game again. It's not bad. It just made me realize that hype about a game can overwhelm the game itself. In the end, it's an excellent game, but it's probably my least favorite of the series. That is just my opinion, but I know over time I can probably get back into it, but frankly, I'd rather just play the old ones again. <laughs>
I would still recommend it to people. I just think they should probably wait till it's cheaper, just like Ground Zeroes. Ground Zeroes, I have felt the same about that, except Ground Zeroes felt a little more like a tech demo than a game. It was very short, 30 bucks. And sadly, I'm one of those that bought it twice. I bought it for 20 bucks on PS3 and then 30 bucks for PS4. God, how much more money do you want from me, Konami? Shame on you, but shame on me, because I gave in, just like pretty much everybody else. Back! Good news is, Hideo Kojima's back, baby. He's back, and he's gonna make his own games. Fuck Konami, so. Mm -hmm. Thanks for hearing me out. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you